Ah, here we are back again. And for some reason, I'm still fixing the boot floor. There's no point welding a bunch of stuff into a car if you're not going to bury all evidence under a thick layer of underseal. That's the gist of this video. I'm going to seam seal all of the seams, then underseal the underside, and of course put everything back together. I need the tank back in so that I can move the vehicle around. Here's what I'm using, beige seam sealer. I have a fancy sealant gun, that's why I'm using cartridges but brush on would have probably been easier. Now this is going to be a bit messy, but that's okay. The game plan is to push the sealant into the seams as much as possible. I am undersealing everything as well, so I don't need to put a big squishy bead over the joins. Just make it as sealed as possible. Ideally, every double skin seam would be sealed up airtight, but it's not possible to get into these corrugations, for example. That's where I'll be using cavity wax, but that happens later. And I'm using basic old fashioned bitumen based underseal. It's good, I like it, and I think it's probably what Land Rover used when this car was made. But it's very messy, and you can't paint over it. And good luck if you get some on your foot and walk through the house. It's actually been a couple of weeks since I did the undersealing. It has rained here constantly. And under here looks pretty good, pretty factory. In fact, the only way you can really tell anything was done is the weld line on either side. So now I'm going to seam seal the inside as well. That's replicating what Land Rover did. I am going to tape off everywhere I'm putting the seam sealer. This isn't to replicate the OEM finish, because Land Rover just glooped it on with a brush anyway, but this ensures I don't make a huge mess. And also, I ran out of time in the day to do the seam sealing itself, so I may as well throw some tape down while I have a little bit of time to kill. I've also got all of these plug welds in the middle. I don't really need to seam seal those up, but I'm going to tape them off anyway, because once I open the seam seal canisters, it's like, use it or lose it. They won't keep on the shelf. So if I have any left over at the end, I'll blob seam seal over these plug welds as well. Just in case there's tiny pinholes. I can't really remember where we're up to. It's been Christmas and stuff. But I think since you've last seen it, all I've done is paint this back piece here, made it a little tidier. The last actual job I have to do on the repair is to cavity wax all of the internal bits. I mean, areas like inside this rear cross member. But on this vehicle specifically, the other area I really want to get at is underneath. So, up and around these cross braces that run across the underside of the floor. Inside the corrugated shapes, 
obviously the under seal doesn't get inside there. So at the moment it's just weld through primer. And that will have burnt off around any welds. So I'm going to get the cavity wax up into every single individual little uh, cavity. I'll be using Dinatrol. I have a leftover from the other chassis. I think this is pretty much a full can. Might not be enough. But I'll do the hard to reach places first and I can always do the rear cross member later. I've also got the squirty out everywhere hose. You get the idea. I'm going to crawl further underneath, move the camera out of the way, and uh, finish off all of these other pieces I need to get to. Oh, it's everywhere. As expected, I ran out before I could do the rear cross member. It's just after New Year's at the moment. Everything's closed for another week. So um, I'll have to do this part later. Here's a pre -re Here's a pre-enactment. Next job is to deal with this pile of parts. Not these, I have new ones of these. Don't worry about the masking tape. My son did that. It's a fire engine, okay? The tank itself is plastic, so I don't really need to worry about that. I do want to repaint this big strap bracket thing. Along with the new parts. These are the large mud flap support brackets, and these two go with these. These are for the front but I'll paint them while I'm here. Now paddock spears sell these as galvanized. I don't think they're hot dip galvanized as such. They're just laser cut from galvanized sheet. They didn't have this one in stock as galvanized so I got black. Kind of wish I'd got plain ones for all of them because these galvanized ones are razor sharp. They need painting anyway because I think these edges are just plain steel where they've been cut. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't strip this back to steel and start from fresh, well, yeah, so am I. It took me longer to clean it than it would have taken to strip it. But there was some psychologicalness going on here. I'm trying to not let this quick repair get out of hand, so it makes total sense to spend longer doing a worse job just to avoid this turning into a full-blown project. The new black parts just need a quick scuff. They're usable as is, but since I'm painting the other parts, I may as well spray these as well, so they match. The galvanized parts need a good scuff with Scotch-Brite soaked in wax and grease remover. Normal spray paint would have been fine, but since I have quite a few parts to paint, I went through the hassle of getting out the spray guns. And I'm using the leftover paint from the other chassis. Epoxy primer and 2K top coats. All right, now for the fun part. I would like to replace every rubber hose on the car, but I didn't pre-plan that at all, and apparently Repco don't carry fuel rated hose this size. This one feels okay, but there was evidence that it had been leaking in the past. I'm not going to hold everything up waiting for a piece of new hose, so this one's going back in. The hassle is that if I decide to change it later, the tank has to come out. The big hose, however, is easy to swap later, so that's no problem. I did intend to pull all of this out and clean it up as well, but to do that, 
I need to replace this rubber bung. And I'm pretty sure I ordered two of them. One for now and the other one in case I paint the vehicle sometime in the future. But I can't for the life of me find them. So I either lost them or maybe I only ordered them in my brain. Not sure. Either way, this is going to stay as is for now. Well, it's the following morning and it's raining. Forecast to rain for two days. Great. I don't want to wait two days, so I'm going to try and battle through. Land Rover's been sitting in this spot for months. I really want to get it moving. It's not going to be road legal today, obviously, but if I can just move it from this spot to clean all the rust off the driveway, that'd be pretty good. There's a brake line under here that I still need to hook up through that thing. I better do that now before I forget. I've got a bruised tailbone as well, which makes this much more pleasant. Hopefully it's not fractured. I had a friend who fractured their tailbone. I thought that was hilarious. Now before I forget, I'm going to bleed the brakes as well. Oh, this door opens now. That's pretty cool. How do you open this again? Sideways. It's a sideways pusher. Hmm, almost black. It'll do for now. Okay, are these things 10 or 11? I can't remember, I thought they were 13, but they're definitely not 13. I'll try and start it with a socket. Oh, the fan tail's back. This guy has been visiting me daily. He or she has become, dare I say it, a close friend. Should have bought a Toyota, you dumb cunt. Dick. This is why everything takes 100 years. Did I get the wrong one? Ah, oh, peak idiot. What is going on? Might need more power. That's always the answer. All right, that'll do. There's plenty in the line. The brakes will need bleeding uh, more properly later, but that'll do for now. I'll do the other side off camera. I think it's finally time to put the tank back in. Before I do that, just a quick word about this thing. It might help someone else out. This is not the normal style of quick connect fuel line connection, and it took me a while to figure it out. I'm guessing Land Rover only used this style of connection briefly because there is next to nothing about it on the internet. If you encounter this, what you need to look for is a fuel line coupling tool for a 1990 4 litre Ford V6. Yes, that is specific. And for some reason the same connector ended up in Land Rover's parts bin in 1993. This strap is the next thing to go in. This will go up inside the vehicle before the tank goes in. It sits on top of the tank like this, or maybe like this. I'm not sure, it doesn't matter right now. I think like this actually. You can see where it was rubbing against the tank, and it was actually pretty rusted and pitted on both sides where the strap is pulled down hard against the plastic. Now normally there would be a piece of rubber between the strap and the tank, but this is a plastic tank, so Land Rover didn't bother. However, I'm going to put a piece of rubber in there to stop this chafing happening next time.
the trick is that this goes in upside down. How am I? Hmm. I didn't really intend to permanently glue these two pieces together, but well, I guess that's what we're doing now. Oh yeah, that's nice. This drizzle is getting a little persistent now. Okay, so I'm putting this hose on the opposite way around from how it was before so that it's not going to dig into the same spot with this barb. Hopefully that's a good thing. Well, it's properly raining now, so actually it's not too bad right this second. Anyway, the big camera is going to stay in the shed. We're just going to have to use phone mode from now on. I think these are pretty waterproof. I'm going to get wet just lining it up. I had to replace the creeper as well. The new model's not as cool. But... So this strap can move around. I guess the idea is we tighten these up after the tank is installed. So we'll push the tank up and then pull the strap down. Okay, petrol tank time. I don't really know how this is going to go in terms of lifting the tank up. Oh yeah, super easy. Yeah, easiest thing ever. It's one. Okay, those are both started. How do I get out? Oh shit. Yeah. I hope I put that on the right way around. This tank actually hooks over one side of the chassis. Which maybe ruins my plan. We'll see. Come on. You came out. Ha. Ah. Now you hold that and uh, oh. the new thing. Well, this would be easier with, well, tuck it. Man, it was quite tough. I hope all the hoses went in the right place. Got this big guy to put in, with some new hose clamps, and uh, it's raining pretty hard right now, so I'm just going to sneak under there and do that. It's just this pipe and the two breather hoses to go. Oh, even my creep is soaking wet now. Okay, this is getting a bit ridiculous now. Well, it's the morning. My body is about 10% ibuprofen. Feeling good. Let me show you underneath where we were up to yesterday. Fuel tank is in, all fixed down, and all of the hoses. The big hose, the little fuel coupling, and somewhere up inside here, the breather hose. 
I still have to drill a couple of holes for some wiring, but otherwise the fuel system is in. Now it's time to put the mudguard support brackets on. But there is a little problem. These new ones clash with the muffler. Now, they do otherwise fit, and I kind of need a new exhaust anyway. But I could also just clean up the old ones. Don't know, and mud flaps aren't a priority when the car is parked on my driveway. So I'll solve this little problem some other time. It's time we got this thing moving. I removed the tank on the, oh wow, well, 10th of August. There was quite a big chunk of time in the middle that was unavailable for Land Rovering, but still, it's been a while, and I'm anxious to move this vehicle. So, it's YouTube's favourite joke to say you're filling a car with old lawnmower fuel. <laughs> um, that's actually happening right now. This is two-stroke going in. I only have one can, and I emptied as much as possible into the mower first. But there was still a litre or two left. So it might smoke a little more than usual. You probably won't notice. And now that the container's empty, I obviously filled it up with another 5 litres of normal fuel and put that in the tank too. Alright, what do you reckon? How do I... I'm not sure the fuel is going to be enough. There's only about 6 litres sitting in the bottom of a very big tank. And the gauge is registering... No, it's registering something. It's below empty, but... Let's go. Might have to go and get more fuel. Okay, back soon. I just put another five liters in. Splashed out on 95 this time. No excuses now, it should start. Otherwise we've got a different problem. All right, here we go. It is hard starting sometimes. Again. Come on. Ugh. I'm gonna lose the battery if I keep trying. I think we've got fuel though, so that's not the problem. Well, it could be. What is this? Oh well, at least the boot floor's fixed. And despite miserably failing in my quest to start the car, this is the end of the video. I think it probably just needs more petrol. You might not be able to tell in the videos, but the front right wheel is about 600mm or 2 feet lower than the left rear wheel. It's on a pretty steep slope, and the 11 or 12 litres of petrol in it might not be enough for the pump to pick up. Anyway, the point is, I don't really need to move it. So I'm not going to get distracted by a mechanical side quest right now. I think the boot floor turned out great. But we're not out of the rust hole yet. There are still two more tricky patches to deal with. Nowhere near the scope of the boot floor up here, but access is difficult, so I'm a little anxious to get them done. That's what I'll be doing next. For now, Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.